Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Blake. This is Ivy. And in today's video, we are going to be figuring out why this here Honda won't start. Uh, I went out and picked this thing up from the leased pasture where we had our cows just a couple days ago. I did a video on that. I'll throw a link to it over there in the in the corner somewhere. And my buddy told me the Honda wouldn't start and the Polaris would, so I didn't even mess with it. I just threw the winch to it and pulled it up on the trailer. But for now, let's try to figure out exactly why it won't start. Feels like battery's dead. I'm gonna be a little annoyed if I went through all that angle winching this thing on for a dead battery. That'd be kind of stupid. But what in the world is going on here? Free screwdriver. It was ours to start with, but that's not the point. <laughs> Oh, hey, there's a wrench, too. All right. This job's already working out in my favor. What do you think? Did you find your toys? Yeah. Those are the ones we left in the pickup, aren't they? A few weeks ago when I was, move or, uh, I was driving from Casper over to Brandon's place, uh, I had a dry chemical fire extinguisher go off in the cab of the pickup, and it made a really really serious mess and I uh, a lot of that crap I just shoved out and dumped in the floor here the garage is definitely a mess uh, I've been cleaning as I have time but I just haven't had a whole lot of time to do that lately so we'll grab our meter and you can see it looks like Brandon has put little wire extensions on here, which tells me this is not the first time this has been an issue, which tells me this thing probably needs a battery. But we're going to do the diagnostic work and find out before we just start buying stuff. I don't know if you can see that or not, so let's turn on a light. I hope that helped and didn't just screw the whole thing up. Let's go like so. And is this going to be a ground? Nope. Is that going to be a ground? Yep. All right, 12.0. Sitting here static, we look good. But a static reading is not very useful because this battery can show a good surface charge but when it's put under an actual load, that could drop off. So I am going to hit record, which is a really neat feature on a lot of your better meters. Uh, that one's a fluke. That's an 87, actually. And let's hit record and... Is it low are we dropping? I don't trust that. That's, that's all I have to say is I just don't trust that. Here's our problem. I didn't have a real great connection over here with my ground lead and because of that with the meter set to record when I bumped that meter lead it uh, it kind of broke this connection over here just enough that the voltage dropped and the meter recorded the lowest voltage which was caused by me bumping the lead and not necessarily by this thing failing to start. So the next thing I want to do is figure out how in the heck I 
get to this thing. Let's see where we are now. Well, you can already kind of see, but uh, let's try this again. Power on. No go. Which is okay. Well, I mean, it's it's not okay. It's what we're trying to fix, but that's fine for now because it gives us an opportunity to fix it. 11.5, 11.2, and you can maybe hear the solenoid is closing. So let's go to our next point because we have power coming from our battery to our solenoid. So now we got to see if we have power coming out of our solenoid into the rest of the system i suspect we do so that's hot all the time so the other side should be our load side or switched side yep that one's not hot that's what i want so now when i throw the start switch well that's trouble I'm not getting any power on the fire side or the controlled switched side of the relay. Because if I jump back over here, I don't have, all right, I think I got a bad ground then. There we go, now I got a ground. Now let's go back to the switch side of our relay. There we go, relay's good, relay's all right. Here's our starter. And first thing I'm gonna do is just a cheap, well, cheap, kind of cheesy, but pretty effective test. Uh, I'd love to use a hammer, but I don't have one handy. So we're gonna use this pipe wrench and we are gonna gently tap on our starter while trying to start, but that's going to need two hands, so... I'm tapping on it what we're trying to do is this starter is a little electric motor and it's a little DC electric motor and DC electric motors have brushes in them that uh, transfer power from the commutator to the studs in the side of the motor and over time those brushes will wear as those brushes wear they can begin to stick and they can begin to lose contact. So tapping on a starter will occasionally, not every time, but occasionally, if it's just brushes, it will allow them to clear up and uh, it frees them up for a second so it'll start. So if you get one that starts when you whack the starter, go buy a starter that's only gonna work once or twice. And I have 12 volts at my starter. That's good, that's what we want. So because I'm getting 12 volts to the starter, I know that all my cables and wiring and everything on the positive side should be okay. I am of the opinion we have a failed starter on this particular piece of equipment, so what I have got to do now is figure out how in the heck this starter comes off. 
And again, I am 100% positive there is someone watching this right now about to start shouting at their computer because they know exactly how to do this. And you're probably going to see me do it the hard way. So let's get you back on the barn jack here. And let's take things apart. This is one of those things people ask me a lot. They say, how did you get into working on stuff? How do you know how to do all this and that sort of thing? And essentially, all I can tell you is you just have to start doing it. I'm not super familiar with ATVs. I'm not super familiar with Hondas, but I know enough about general mechanic work that I'm totally confident jumping into this thing knowing we are going to be able to resolve the issue. There's one screw. Let's see what kind of contortion act I'm going to have to do to get to the other one. Some of you were wondering why I didn't use my right hand center. Well, I injured it in a farm accident back during the summer and lost all feeling in my right thumb. So I can't tell when I'm, it, it's just really difficult to position everything when you can't feel what's going on. So right now I'm actually using my first two fingers on my right hand to try to try to do this. And there, there it went, there it went. So socket is out, socket's in the floor. The screw came out, screw is in here somewhere. We'll find that later. Now is that going to let that starter move is the question. Or is there another screw somewhere? Nope, that's... It can wiggle. It can wiggle a little. Come on. Let's see if we can get this thing to come out. I know. Oh, tell me all about the little girl. Good idea. Some folks were asking why you haven't seen Ivy as much lately other than kind of in the background of a video or two. Well, here she is. She hadn't gone anywhere. There it is. There it is. Hey, look at that. We went a Honda starter. All right, so we got our starter out. Our starter is just a basic electric motor. It grounds through the case. You can see our jump box here is fully charged. I'm gonna take our positive lead, put power to the positive post there on the starter. And if this starter was any good, it would spin. But it doesn't, because it's garbage. And I still haven't decided exactly how we are going to proceed with this repair whether we are buying a complete new starter or rebuilding this starter or what but regardless of what we do i want to take this one apart and i shouldn't have opened the vise up this far but i want to take this one apart and take a look inside so maybe we can see what caused this failure to begin with so we're going to remove our screws, and you can see these screws just run right down the outside. They thread in right there, but they just unscrew, pull them straight out. Pull your end cap straight up. Ooh wee, that's nasty. Look at that. All that black stuff you see is carbon dust. That is carbon dust from the motor brushes wearing because they're a, a carbon brush but i'm going to lift up and that's going to pull our armature uh, this is our power stud we ground through the case two of these brushes are for power two of these brushes are for ground and as you can see these brushes are pushed in by these little springs and these little springs are as far in as they can possibly go these brushes are worn out so I'm gonna grab this armature and I'm gonna pull it out. Now normally you would not wanna do this because your brushes are going to come out of place on their little spring followers, but because we're replacing the brushes anyway, it doesn't matter. 
So I'm gonna pull it out and you see that resistance there? That's because the field uh, in this starter motor is created by magnets. So there are actually magnets in there that are trying to hold this thing in. But here's our armature assembly. You can see here's our drive gear. This is your actual armature. This part here is your commutator. And it's hard for you guys to see, I know, but all this is like, hi Ivy, please don't lick the camera. Uh, all this is molded with insulation. This is copper, and if you look closely, again, I know it's hard to tell, but this is actually worn kind of in a almost a U pattern where that brush was only riding on that one little bitty spot right there. So that'll need to be cleaned up, and you can see these brushes are kind of foul, but... One of our brushes right here, it's just totally gone. Our other one here is totally gone. They've actually fallen off their leads. I'll guarantee you that's why this thing would not start. I am going to have to look. I don't know if I can get brushes or another brush assembly for this starter. So I'm gonna check into that. If I can't, we're gonna have to buy a new starter. Uh, if I can, we might rebuild this starter. Get your butt down. Uh, if I can get brushes, we might rebuild this starter, but depending on how much a replacement is and looking at the wear on our commutator there, you can see that that wear a little more like this. Uh, that's what we're dealing with. So there's all of our brushes or what's left of them after they're worn out. So I'm going to go edit these videos together. Uh, subscribe if you want to see how this ends. Thanks for watching and more later.